Ladies and gentlemen, happy Thursday. We are going to go over today's lesson um, from Thursday. This is the 22nd. And so let's take a look at our guided practice. And what we're really talking about today is how to look at data um, that's represented and sort of get a lot of information from that um, just by using sort of what makes sense by using our visuals here. So let's take a look. Hilda and Connie's scores on their recent history quizzes are shown below. So I have Hilda here and I have Connie here and I'm looking at Hilda. She has a couple of 68s, a 70, a 71, 73, 74, and then a 76, 77, 78, 79. I'm going to take a look at Connie's. Connie's lowest score here is a 69. She has a couple of 74s. She's got some 78s. And then the rest of these, she's in the 80s, 80s, 82, 84, 88, 92, 93. And so the question is asking me, based on just a visual inspection, which student appears to have the highest, a higher typical score? All right, so typical quiz score. This word typical, when we're like looking at data, uh, you're not saying who scores the highest every single time, who scores the highest forever and ever, kind of based on what I'm looking at, who has a higher typical score. And we're going to explain our reasoning using specific features. And so I think this one seems really apparent. Connie tends to have higher scores. Connie tends to have higher scores. because um, just visually, um, she has one, two, three, four, five. She has five scores higher than Hillary's highest, or it's Hilda, right? What was her name? Oops. Hilda, okay. She has five scores higher than Hilda's top score. Okay, that's just one reason. Let's talk about some other reasons that I can just assume by looking here that Connie has higher scores. Um, so she has five scores that are higher. Uh, Hilda has two scores that are lower than Connie's lowest score. Okay, and then Hilda's scores are sort of clustered and nothing goes above 79. They're sort of clustered between the 68 and 79. All right, so let's take a look at my second question. Based on my visual inspection of the dot plot, which student's next quiz grade would be easier to predict? Explain your reasoning. Okay, so I'm looking at these quiz scores, okay? And I'm going to look at Hilda's range versus Connie's range. So Hilda goes from 68 to 79. Her range is 11. And Connie goes from 69 all the way up to 93. Okay? So her range is 24, 70, 80, 93. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just kind of looking at it, doing a little teeny bit of mental math, I think if I were to have to guess uh, the score for one of these young ladies, it would be easier for me to guess what Hilda was going to get because her data is more clustered and it has a lower range than Connie's score. Okay. So Hilda's next grade is easier to predict because um, Connie has more variability in her data. Okay, and Hilda has clustered data. All right. So moving right along.
So we did this now for this one right here. They didn't give us any any numbers. Um, and so our estimate of the center would really not have worked. Um, we end range actually. So I'm going to just cross this one out. I know for Syracuse, I kind of like just drew some numbers under there, but for our sake, we don't really have to. So for this one, I have a range of 44 to 49. Okay. So my range is always the greatest minus the least. Okay, and so the range here is five. And then my center, and again, I'm just kind of eyeballing it. I'm just estimating. Uh, my center, I'm going to say, is 46.5. You could say 46. You could say 47. Looking at this data right here, I have a range of three. Okay, and my center, I would say, is five and a half. From here, I have a range of eight, okay, and I'm going to say the center of my data is about seven, okay? <clears throat> All right, so let's move down to the homework. All right, and here's our exit ticket here. So the box pot below show the height of a random sample of men and women. Oh, this is the exit ticket, women from a particular population. Uh, you know what, let's go over this one, why not? So what I'll talk to you about in this box plot here is when I see a box plot, I know a few things about the data right away. I know that this tail here or the whisker, that's the lowest 25% of the data. This uh, inner quartile one also represents 25% of the data. This uh, line in the middle of the box is the median, okay? This is the third quartile, it's 25% of the data, and then this whisker out here is 25% of the data. And so when we talk about the IQR or the interquartile range, it's the 50% of the data that is inside of the box, okay? And I'm gonna erase this because in order to answer this question, you're probably gonna need to see it a little better. So the question here is, I right, so have the heights of uh, random women and men, men and women from a particular population. Okay, so which of the following statements is true? A, a typical man in this population is taller than a typical woman, woman because of the difference in interquartile ranges. And this is not about interquartile ranges here. I've, yes, a typical man is taller than a typical woman, but it's not because of the interquartile ranges. It's because here, if I look at a typical man and a typical woman, there's no overlap here at all, right? The, all of the men in this particular population were taller than all of the women. Men and women in this population have the same typical height because the ranges of heights are the same for each gender. So, all right, well, let's see, 60 to 65, and then I have 68 here to 73. The range is the same for each gender, but these, these populations do not have the same typical height. Again, they don't even overlap, all right? So it's definitely not A, it's definitely not B. The variation in height is similar for men and women because the ranges of heights are the same for each gender. Now, here's one that I'm more likely to believe. I have the range here is the same, and also my interquartile range between uh, 61 to 64 here. It's between 69 to 72 here, right? So it's a, a range of three inches in the interquartile. I think this could be it, but let me just double check with D. The variation in height is greater for men than for women because men have a higher median height. And we know that variation really talks about the range and the number of different sets of data. So that's not true, okay? 
our answer here is C. And now let's move down to the homework. <clears throat> okay. So Steve decides to help Miss Bavsar investigate which brand of raisins she should order for lunch. All right. And so we have brand A and brand B. And it looks like they've counted the number of raisins in the box. And why anybody would do that, I do not know, but they did it. So let's see here. Which brand appears to have greater variability? And what does this mean in context of the problem? Explain how you know. Okay. So here I have my lowest number in brand A is 28. And my highest number in brand A is way up here. My lowest number in brand B is 25, and my highest number is 35. And here I see I have these like outliers, right? And this is kind of an outlier. I would say 31 is probably not an outlier. And then I have the the rest of the cluster in here. So if if we were to uh, name this, we would say this has a tail, right? If I were to look at this data, this has a tail over here on the left, and here. I don't really have much of a tail, right? This data looks a little bit more symmetrical, although it's not perfectly symmetrical. So the greater variability here is in brand A. I have a much higher range, okay? Here my range is only about 11. Here my range is 28, 38, 40. So it's about 20-ish, right? 20 something. So I'm gonna say that my greater variability is in brand A, brand A. Variability. Okay, and in the, in the context of this problem, this means um, that Miss B can't really be sure. I can't count on consistency. Right? She might get a box of raisins that has those 40-something raisins, but she might get that box of raisins that has that 25-something raisins. So she might say, I want to buy something where I'm sure I'm going to get within this amount of raisins. So she might choose B for that reason. Or she might say, hey, you know what? I'm, I'm, you know, I know that some of these boxes might only have 28 raisins, but most of them have between 33 and 42. So even though I can't really depend on brand A as much, I'm going to choose brand A because it's still more likely that I'll get more raisins. So that'll be her choice, okay? So here we have Claren and Mackay, and I think the only confusing thing about this problem is that they're right next to each other, all right? So Claren is here in blue, and Makai is here, and I circled his stuff in red, okay? And so, which student demonstrates a greater variability in their grades? And show and explain how you know. So here I have 92, 94, 96, 94, right? These are all clustered. This is definitely a cluster of grades. And here I have from 67 all the way up to 83. So this is more spread out data, all right? So Mackay has greater variability because, because uh, his data has a higher range. And Claren, Claren's data is clustered with a very small range. Okay, so what does that mean? That means if I'm a teacher and I'm looking at this data and I'm saying, hmm, who should get extra tutoring? Who should be in my tutoring group? I'm not going to put Claren in my tutoring group because Claren has scored between a 92 and a 96 on these uh, last four quarters. But Mackay, he's getting better, right? So he started at a 67. 
he jumped to a 74. That's awesome. Then he jumped to an 83 and quarter three and he stayed about the same 83 and quarter four. I want to give him tutoring because I know that he's totally capable of doing an awesome job, but he hasn't been as consistent. And so his data is more variable. I want to get him to a place where not only are his grades higher, but they're more consistent. Okay. And that was really what this uh, objective was about, gentlemen. So I will see you tomorrow. Um, I hope you have a really great night.